Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back. This is Han Talks First, a Star Wars show where we talk about everything Star Wars. Star Wars. Yesterday, I did a review on Vader Immortal. If you're interested in checking that out, you can go right here and watch that video. It has some of the gameplay from it as well. But today, we're talking about Lady Corvax, Lord Corvax, and the Proto Saber. All really fantastic things that make Star Wars lore masters giddy. If you're new here, welcome. Please consider liking this video and checking out some of the other videos on the channel as well. And subscribe if you haven't yet already. We do videos all the time here on the channel. I find your lack of subs disturbing. So let's jump into it. Who is Lady Corvax? Lady Corvax was a force sensitive woman who lived on the planet Mustafar with her husband, Lord Dorwin Corvax. One day, her husband died in battle and she attempted to resurrect him by using the planet's most sacred artifact called the Bright Star. But instead of reviving him, the energies that was unleashed completely destroyed the surface of Mustafar, making it what it is today. So this is a really interesting part of the story because it shows that Mustafar wasn't always the decrepit, lava-filled hell that we have saw in Revenge of the Sith and Rogue One. But in fact, it used to be a lush planet thriving with life, and it was green, and it was beautiful, and it wasn't so creepy. Now, the bright star was a crescent-shaped crystal and the most sacred artifact of the Mustafarians. Mustafarians, of course, are the native species on the planet. They're kind of an insect-looking creature that we get to interact with in the game. We could also see a little bit of what these creatures looked like in Revenge of the Sith. The bright star was supposed to be a life-giving crystal, but Lady Corvax needed a technological device to harness that power in order to save her fallen husband. So she created something called an Eon Engine. Now, if you haven't played the game, one of the cool parts of episode one is you get to spy on Vader, and he's talking to this mysterious figure with a, a cloak over his face so you don't get to see him. Turns out that that is Lord Corvax, and he's trapped in the in-between realm between physical and spiritual because the first time she tried to use this object, it failed, and it didn't bring him back to life, but trapped him in the in-between. And they're standing in front of the Eon engine, and Vader is communicating to it, and you hear the voice of Padme. So this device is going to help him harness the power of the bright star to bring Padme back to life. Because Lady Corvax's attempt to bring Dorwin back to life failed, he was cursed to be trapped between the real world and the afterlife. After this incident, Lady Corvax kept the artifact hidden in her sanctum, whose key could only be used by one of her descendants. She hoped that one day, a future descendant would be able to recover the bright star, bring it back to the Mustafarians, and perhaps repair some of the damage she had done. So also in the game, it has to do with you being captured by the Imperials and brought to Vader's castle. If you want to see a full review breakdown of that story, you can watch it in the video I did yesterday. But basically, you have a choice. In order to escape, you can help the Mustafarians find the Bright Star and they'll help you escape. Or you can join forces with Vader to find the Bright Star and he'll train you in the ways of the Force. Vader's intent is to use the Bright Star to bring back Padme, his dead wife. Throughout the game, the player, who is the descendant of Lady Corvax, learns powers of the Force that they never knew they had, being trained by Vader himself, without knowing his intent to use it to bring back his dead wife. Vader does eventually hook up the Bright Star to the Eon Engine and activates it. The crystal admitted a beam of energy into the skies, and a blue shimmering outline of Padme began to appear. However, before the star could, could finish its work, the descendant of Corvax returned and dueled Vader with the Black Bishop's lightsaber. So yeah, that's another fun part of the game is you get to discover an ancient lightsaber that belonged to Lord Corvax. The, the lightsaber itself is really cool. It's unlike any other lightsabers we've seen in the galaxy before. There's not much history in the game itself about this lightsaber, but I did luckily managed to find some additional information in this lightsaber collection book that I recently got. So the lightsaber belonged to Dorwin Corvax, who was also known as the Black Bishop. There's not much more we know about him, but we can further go into his lightsaber, also known as a Proto Saber. It's far more ornate than most lightsabers. The light sword has corkscrew prongs twisting around the base of its blue energy blade and a fan-like structure connecting the cross guard to the hilt and unusual crystal configurations relies on the exposed kyber crystal mounted on the ignition ring, perhaps attesting to the extreme age of this extraordinary force relic. The saber itself also has an Easter egg built into it, where if you use the key crystal from Lady Corvax's sanctum, 
placing it on top of the lightsaber cues a hollow map of secret treasures. This was a great add-in to this lightsaber, and it shows more mystical aspects of it than a regular lightsaber normally would. Because it's such an ancient design, I would say kind of a medieval approach to this futuristic lightsaber. It has different features, and one of them from the game, which was one of the coolest ones, was it has a hollow map built into it when activated by Lady Corvax's crystal. And at the end of the game, when you access that map for the first time, you find out that it shows the location of secret treasures throughout the Outer Rim. So it implies that this character in the game is going to go forward on more adventures. So I'm crossing my fingers. We're going to have a Vader sequel coming up soon. Now, David S. Goyer, the writer of the Vader Immortal series, said that this significant lightsaber is likely to appear in future Star Wars. When I heard this, I thought immediately of Old Republic. Considering the fact that this is an ancient weapon and not like the modern day lightsabers we see in current Star Wars canon, it's possible that we would get to see it most likely in some of those Old Republic books, which is only set 50 years before The Phantom Menace, so maybe not. I'd love to see it in a movie because looking at it on screen in the VR world was so cool. It does take a little time to ignite. It doesn't stay ignited for a long time and it distinguishes pretty quickly, but just the look of it and the feel of it was really interesting and it felt like I was holding piece of history. Okay, that's everything you need to know about Lady Corvax and Lord Corvax. Unfortunately, there's not much information we know about them. All of their story was introduced in the Vader Immortal game. The way they did it in the game, as you saw some in some of the footage, they played their story through this watercolor 360 view, which was very beautiful, very stunning, and it made it even more gripping. But that also contributes to the fact that this is a very ancient tale. I love stories like this in Star Wars. This feels like Clone Wars material, and I think David S. Goyer did a great job writing it, and I think Ben Snow did an amazing job directing it. This game really felt like Star Wars, and I really enjoyed it. If you haven't played it, please go check it out, or you can just watch my review and gameplay of it. Again, the video is in the description below. If you like this video, please like it, and if you haven't subscribed yet, what are you doing? Subscribe! How are you going to know when I post videos? You won't, because you're not subscribed. I find your lack of subs disturbing. Anyway, new videos every Monday and Wednesday, live streams every Sunday. I'll see you guys very soon. May the force be with you. Oh, and I forgot to mention, this show is also a podcast, and it's on Apple and Spotify and Google and everywhere you will listen to podcasts. So if you're on the go or stuck in traffic, check it out there. Talk to you guys soon.